Welcome to the Tabletop Gaming Guild podcast, a podcast all about the experiences and memories that playing board games with friends and family can create. On this episode, we're going to talk about International Podcast Day because it's actually International Podcast Day while we're recording. Now, as you know, we are the greatest podcast ever. So far none. Without looking that up, you know that we are the best podcast. So we're not going to talk about us because that would we are obviously the best and the greatest and the only one you really should listen to. But all of us hosts here are going to talk about our favorite podcasts and why we like them to celebrate this great, great day. So let's go ahead off and start with Nathan's first favorite podcast. Well, before we do that, we should mention, since a lot of listeners are probably asking, when is International Tabletop Day? So when are we recording this? It's September 30th, in case you're curious. International Podcast Day. Day. Yes, International Podcast. Yes. Oh, and and Eric and (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) He doesn't host any podcast. Wait, does he? (laughs) He's probably been on a few as a guest, right? As a guest, for sure. But yes, Nathan. Okay, so I'll start off with a board game related podcast. Not all these are going to be board game related. This one is my favorite board game podcast other than ours, for example. I don't need to say that after every podcast I've mentioned, do I? No. Um, It's inferred that we are the best, so therefore, and everyone knows, so we're good. This game is broken. Really great, fun board gaming podcast. This is more on the entertainment spectrum more than the informative this is a group of people that got together and they're basically playing board game related games so they'll do some trivia stuff but it's all like random games that they put together to make a game show it's like things like oh the guy spells all the words backwards and has to pronounce them and then ever other people have to guess what game he's saying based on him pronouncing the word backwards and they have one guy that actually writes a song every once in a while and they'll, he'll sing a song about a game and they have to guess what game he's talking about that kind of stuff it's it's really fun it's meant to be lighthearted and nonsense there's no winners really they kind of make up the scores as they go but great fun entertaining slightly informative not really <laughs> how often does uh how often does this podcast come out is this like a weekly a bi-weekly you know oh thanks for asking that question I don't, I don't <laughs> know that they're they i listen to their that same podcast it's really good i yeah. don't know that it's like it seems to be sporadic okay so it's not like real s- specific always how often it comes out uh, right. could be for my sporadically downloading it, but it doesn't seem to be. No, I'm looking at it. It's like, okay, they got two so far in September. They had one in August. They had three in July. So no, it does. It seems like two to three a month seems like the standard. Okay. All right. So, yeah. I'm, so I'm looking up, looking up their about on their, on their thing here, but you said there's four, oh no, five, five different people who are part of the, the panel. Oh, I recognize one of these names, Paula Deming. Yeah. She does uh, a lot of them on there. They also have a YouTube channel. This game is broken and they've been on uh board game breakfast a couple times. And mm-hmm. I believe most of them are part of Rodney Smith's YouTube channel thing. I was going to say Paula Deming yeah. does, uh, uh, sketches on YouTube yes. about good, gaming, see, yes. and those, yeah, those are great sketches. So I'll have to check out this podcast. They're all pretty prolific. They do a lot of other board game related things. Matthew Jude, Nick, and Mike Murphy have the Mur- uh, the brothers Murph. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they, Dave Luz is in much. He's uh he's in not based awesome. in the U.S. So <laughs> he he has his own YouTube channel though, but I haven't seen any new content on it recently. But that doesn't mean anything. He was on the last episode of This Game Is Broken. Right, um, so this game is broken. And I, I, I mean, I like Matthew Matthew Jude the most on that. Actually, he is very uh, angry like me. Well, <laughs> he actually took it over. He kind of it seems like he's the one that's more running it more than the others. I, I think Richard. Dan originally did it, right? Yes. Dan from uh, Sporadically Bored. Yeah, Dan, did, Dan and Cora do a uh, like a, a YouTube thing and they do a thing on a board game breakfast a lot. My daughters love Cora. She does. They go over the kids games. Okay. And he also did board game time capsule on a board game breakfast. And yeah, I like Dan Hughes a lot, and, but my daughters love watching Cora. I think something that's always interesting is finding out like how, how people find out about podcasts. Cause there's so many podcasts out there. How did you guys find out about this one? Nathan, how did you find out about the, this game is broken? Do you remember? No, they all tend to feed into each other. It's like they all yeah. seem to know each other. So that's kind of how okay. a lot of it. Dan Hughes, I think I I found this game is broken first. Okay. I got introduced to Dan Hughes, and then I listened to Sporadically Bored, which a lot introduced me to a lot of ever other programs and podcasts because they always do a at the end random things that are interested at the end of every podcast. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So I guess I'll I'll go next because I want to do a sad one oh. a podcast that I love. These guys are awesome mm-hmm. and that is brawling brothers and i listen to almost every single one of their podcasts their podcasts go like two and a half three hours long 
Oh gosh. And <laughs> in tribute to them, because their last episode was 150, I am drinking apple juice. So if you listen to Brawling Brothers, you know what apple juice actually is. <laughs> so uh, they're just they just have a high quality podcast. They have wonderful content. It's engaging for the entire length of time that they they do the podcast. It's just amazing. They're Josh and Brandon are the hosts of that one. They have other guests come on. It's just amazing. If the Halloween special they do every year is amazing. Just a great, great podcast. I highly recommend like downloading some of those episodes, especially the ones where they do the plays and stuff through the episode for the Halloween and stuff. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome podcast. They did a great job with it. I'm sad to see them move on from it. So they're not going to be making the show anymore. No, they they ended it after 150 episodes. Oh. They still have a very lively board game geek guild. Uh, and you can go to brawlingbrothers.com and they have a link right there for their guild. Or you can go to Board Game Geek and search it just easier to go there and go straight to it but uh they're amazing they always do that secret santa thing every year with uh their all their listeners it, it's just a really really great podcast and i'm very sad to see it go it is my favorite podcast but unfortunately it is gone oh, so sad i'm only just now finding out about them and they're already gone no i will say their content is amazing <laughs> yeah, and it's definitely yeah. worth watching they have some they have a pretty good summary of what they have in their podcast on each one so if you see like games you like highly recommend going through it they do a then and now so segment where they talk about super ancient games and they talk about current games it's just just awesome just an awesome awesome podcast well if you're interested they do have 150 episodes that you could still listen to right yeah, and, and especially it, if they're like two to three hours long geez i got a lot of listening to do so yeah yeah you, you got a lot of listening to they're really worth it they were uh, i think they went to monthly for a little while and then they went to bi-weekly but i don't remember what they their schedule was all over the place but they made it with that for 150 episodes of amazing quality nice so well, then yeah, Dan, Dan, me, Dan, 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 Dan do you have sure, I'll go next. Okay, so I will start with a gaming podcast that I have listened the most episodes of and also the longest. Wait, and I know which one it Ludolo- is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the Ludology podcast. Ludology podcast was a podcast originally launched by uh, Jeff Engelstein, and they've had a rotation of hosts on there, all of whom have um been a uh, part of the game design industry. Gil Hova, of course, Scott Rogers has done the biography of board game skit for ages and only has recently become a full-fledged host, you know, interviewing guests and discussing topics, but they talk to other game designers, industry people, and they talk about topics in game design and development. They've had some really interesting stuff on there where they talk about people that do things sort of outside of the board game hobby but that are tangentially connected like they talked to a person who's responsible for designing slot machines and a person who's responsible for designing pinball machines get a better sense of game design as body of knowledge and they're on episode 220 plus and because they seem to be able to replace hosts that have said their fill or burnt out I think it's going to go for another many episodes. Okay. And I, I will say that that podcast, Ludology podcast, is more of an intellectual podcast. And they get into a lot about mechanics and stuff. In that, their episodes are generally timeless. So they're not going to... You could go back and watch any of their episodes, especially the ones on mechanics, and still have an enjoyment on there. You're not going to be like having to worry about what, you know, listening to about a game that you already know about. Yeah, their their backlog is extremely still listenable to it. Because like Joe said, it's fairly timeless. They talk about their examples are games of the era that they were in when they recorded obviously Mm -hmm. but like the the topics and the principles that they're talking about sort of apply regardless so yeah they they have one episode a year where they do state of the industry and and then it's like that's like the only topical episode that they regularly do so peter what's your podcast yeah so i mean well so everybody started i know that we have said beforehand that we we don't have to stick with gaming podcasts but since everybody Everybody on this first round definitely talked about a game podcast. I will listen to fairly regular um, the Dragon Talk, the official Dungeons and Dragons podcast, which is uh, put out by Wizards of the Coast. The hosts are Greg Tito and Shelley Mazinoble. And because it's Wizards of the Coast, they constantly have segments with either Jeremy Crawford, who is kind of the he's the guru 
uh, rules person at Wizards of the Coast for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, they will also have regular set segments with uh, Chris Perkins, who is more uh, writing like the adventures or designing the adventures that get put into the hardbacks that they come out with uh, multiple times throughout the year. And he will do segments on like they call, have a segment called Lore You Should Know. And so if you're somebody who's really into D&D, but maybe you've not been playing for a super long period of time and you want to get like some of the lore from the world over the years, they will do segments where they just talk for like 15, 20 minutes about a specific topic in the lore of uh, the different worlds of D&D. They also, you know, come out with, they talk a lot about the new products that are coming out and um, and then just have really interesting discussions with different uh, RPG game designers. So it's not always specifically just talking about D&D, even though that is the majority of what they do. Uh, they will talk to other designers who are who are putting out other products and talk to them about that. So it's it's a it's a good podcast if you're interested specifically in keeping up with where where is D and D what what is what's it up to today and whenever there's new big announcements it's a good place to go to for for those for that information and it comes out regularly it's like a it's a weekly podcast that comes out I think it's Thursdays so yeah it's it's a good one again like if you're specifically wanting to focus on on some D and D content. That's not like there's a lot of like live play or recorded play podcasts nowadays. This is this is not that they're not playing D and D. They're just talking about it and they're having interviews with people who are working on on that game uh, as well as a few other RPGs. So if you're into that kind of thing where you're just getting some news updates and some possibility of like inspiration for running your game, then it's a good podcast to go to. But it is very it is very specifically focused on Dungeons and Dragons. But yeah, so it's it's a good one, Dragon Talk. So Peter may have given in to peer pressure, but I will not. <laughs> I'm going to be the first one to talk about a non-board gaming podcast. Boo, boo, <laughs> go away, leave. So I want to talk about Business Wars. Now, some people may immediately be turned off by the title. Business doesn't sound that exciting. Is but it Lord is... Business? What? Lord Business? I don't Have no one here ever seen any of the Lego movies? Nope. Oh, what the heck is I, wrong I, with I, you I people? saw the first Lego movie once. <laughs> yeah, but... the bad guy's Lord Business. Yeah, I, I would have forgotten. I definitely forgot that. Played by Will Ferrell. <laughs> That part I knew. I knew it was played by Will Ferrell. Well, I had it going in the background as we played board games at your house, James, but that's that's, that's it. So the board games took precedence. As they should. So what's the title yeah. of this podcast again? So it's called Business Wars. Business Wars. And what this podcast does, it does short arcs, usually of six or seven episodes, looking at a business type and taking two of the rival companies and going through their history. But I have to warn you, this is not always family friendly. There's some of these arcs have extreme violence violence for example they talk about you know the diamond industry which everybody mm. knows there's a lot of violence involved in that okay but they also have one about the raisin industry and that's almost as violent as the diamond industry early years of the raisin industry they talk about kidnapping and torturing people to get them to sign contracts and the contracts that they didn't turn in are the ones that had too much blood on them so if you're a little squeamish about that kind of thing some of these episodes you might want to skip and he'll warn you say there's some this episode will contain some violence or whatever at the beginning of the episode so mm -hmm. you may want to skip those those arcs so you've mentioned a couple of these arcs is there one in particular that like you're thinking of that you're like oh man that was a really good so for somebody who's who's you know rather than get lost in the 358 episodes that i'm seeing are on their podcast <laughs> what, what is what is like one arc what is one what? business war that you would that you would recommend i'm seeing the, the one that first caught my eye is wwf versus wcw i'm not a wrestling person but even that would be kind of it. Uh, I think it's the World Wildlife Federation against that, right? <laughs> no, I mean, that was, a, that was a thing. <laughs> the World Wildlife Federation sued WWF so they can no longer use that name. And it was a big fight. Are you Actually, serious? they did talk that's, about that. Yeah, that's yeah, really it was a huge, huge fight, which the World Wide Wrestling Federation lost horribly. Really, really oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, being from Pennsylvania originally, mm -hmm. the series on Hershey I found very interesting. Mm. And it was one of the most positive of the businesses that I've listened to is they tend to be, you kind of get a feeling after a while that businesses are nasty, but Hershey was a really amazing guy. He, uh, first off, he decided he was 
dealing in candy to begin with, and he decided he wanted to get a milk chocolate. But do you, milk chocolate did not exist in the U.S., and nobody in the U.S. knew how to make it. It was only existed in Europe. So he decided to build a factory, build a whole town to support this factory, not knowing how to make the product he was going to sell. He thought, oh, okay, by the end of the year, I'll know it. It took him several years to actually figure out how to make cho- milk chocolate. But in the meantime, he's just supporting this factory. Hmm. <laughs> Beyond that, he was incredibly supportive of the troops during the World War II, I think it was. Hopefully I got that right. I'm pretty sure it was World War II. <laughs> <laughs> then during the depression he made sure all his workers were continued to get paid he refused to lay anybody off he just took it out of his own earnings and then when he before he passed away he decided to leave the entire company to a school for orphans so i mean that is was just such an amazingly good guy. I mean, I'm sure he had, there was some dark sides to him, but. Okay, so so this is the, <laughs> this is the art Hershey versus Mars. Yes. Okay, all right. So I was, Being I was from wondering... Pennsylvania, I had to side with Hershey. And well, he was an amazing guy, of course, too. Yeah, no, that's, so that's really interesting. I'm, this, this is one I'm definitely going to have to check out. Uh, the other nice thing is it looks like all their episodes are pretty short, like anywhere between 25 to 35 minutes. So that's, yep. that's, that's pretty easily consumable. Yeah, that's why he breaks it down into an arc so that yeah i like that manageable size okay so that sounds really interesting but i'm going to get us back to board games and i'm going to get quintessential board game podcast that i think is very industry specific and my second favorite podcast which is the board game insider the board game insider is hosted by nasi chevichek from portal games and steven bonacore formerly from stronghold games now he is the pod father they're at 209 episodes and most of them range between 30 45 minutes and they they talk about a lot of business news for the board game industry and then they also talk about like what their companies are doing but it's a very interesting podcast not only to learn what behind the scenes between behind what the publishers actually do and how that they view the rest of the industry. And Stephen Bonacor is very good with uh, understanding Wall Street and money. And he understands how the big corporations function or what they may be doing. So it's really cool to get his insights on that. Since then, they're still releasing episodes, but Stephen Bonacor is also a host now on uh, Board Game Breakfast Live, I believe. And I just highly recommend checking out their podcast. It's, it's nice. It's great. You get to learn a lot about the industry you get to learn more about portal games and it's just just a good podcast so that is the board game insider yeah and bonacore's yeah they call him the pod the pod father because he shows up on almost every board gaming podcast i hear him constantly i should ask him if you're gonna be on our podcast <laughs> yeah uh, i'm sure he'd agree yeah he probably would uh he's retired right now you can't tell but he's retired right now <laughs> but yeah his podcast is amazing he is very entertaining a very entertaining person and anasi javichek is also an interesting person steven bonacore of course very interesting so (laughs) (laughs) but anyway that's uh, again the board game insider Uh, i think i believe matthew jude actually does their editing so there's a little crossover there now if you played any of ignacy chevichek's games you would think he hates people but no he doesn't yeah we're not gonna get into that there's it's just he's just really bad at rule books well there's that and he likes (laughs) he likes games where you gonna lose yeah like robinson crusoe um what was that mars game called first martian first martian yeah he he has a lot of like that i'm really excited about just talking about board games for a second both portal games and stronghold games teamed up this time to publish stronghold games or stronghold the game stronghold not stronghold games the game stronghold and i believe it's i can't remember it's a zombie edition or whatever and i've always always wanted to play that game it looks amazing so. yeah this that's a game that they've re-released a few times right this is not yeah the- yeah this is actually like a streamlined version newer version but they i think they went with the zombie version of it and i think it has a, one of the expansions wrapped up in it i can't remember off the top of my head but definitely want to play that game looks amazing want to I'd, I'd take any version of it and play it but yeah dan what's your next one i'm going to uh pivot uh, away from board games i guess i only have one non board gaming related podcast to to mention and uh, it, i'm gonna cheat because it's a twofer okay so these are two podcasts that happen to be produced by the same person. They're both produced by a, a gentleman by the name of John Zhu. The first podcast is already complete. So it's finished its production run and you can listen to the full backlog if you're if you're curious about it. The first podcast is called Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the podcast. And his second podcast, which is currently running, is called Water Margin, the podcast. So both of these podcasts are the retelling of, sometimes summary of, great works of Chinese literature. Personally, I have listened to the entire Roman of the Three Kingdoms series that he 
published. Uh, it's 184 episodes because it's a big novel and uh, found it to be uh, quite interesting. I was already sort of familiar with that storyline from like various other forms of media. This is a storyline that's actually shown up in various video games. So that's how I originally got exposed to like the story. Dynasty um, Warriors. Yeah, Dynasty Warriors is one of them. Romance of the Three Kingdoms, is, the strategy game is another. And actually I own a copy of the Outlaws of the Marsh. Uh, it's a three volume set and each volume is, is bigger than an inch. So eventually, I haven't started the water marching yet because I'm giving my, myself a significant break after completing the, the first series. But eventually I will listen to his second series. That one is still in publication. He's still on episode like 110 and I have no clue what chapter he's on. So there you go. Nice. That, that would be, I was just to say, that would be one that I don't think I ever even would have, other than you talking about it, that probably never would have come across my radar because that's not something that I have like a huge interest in, but I have a, some very tangential knowledge of, again, like you were saying, from other media, uh, some other films and video games. So that's really cool that they're, again, there's somebody out there making a podcast. Uh, all yeah, uh, Chinese. I, I'm literature. not a huge fan of historical fiction in general, but mm -hmm. like, I, I really enjoyed this retelling of it. John Zhu, the person who produced it, goes through the trouble of not going into incredible detail when the book goes into incredible detail. Because when, you know, when the book diverges into a poem that's like 10 pages long, he'll just mm -hmm. be like, yeah, there's this huge, awesome, beautiful poem here. I'm just going to stick it on the website for those people who are interested. <laughs> I'm going to go on with the story. Right. He also does something helpful to new listeners or people who are not familiar with the storyline where he won't name characters that they're not important to the story so mm -hmm. like yeah this person goes and does this and you, you noticed i haven't mentioned their name because they're about to die in the next scene yeah uh i've tried to read a rant i read a, a large chunk of it and i could see that being useful because well without all the cultural context it's a little hard to understand at times but the worst part was following all the names especially once they start using alternate names for the same people which can be very hard to follow nice wasn't um legend of the five rings the ccg loosely based off of that too Legend of the Five Rings, the RPG setting, which was also the CCG setting, which was also the fill-in-the-blank setting, because they used the same setting for three different games minimum, oh. it was a fantasy Asian setting, I think based more in feudal Japan than in China, but I couldn't be mistaken. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I always thought that, but I, would, you know, no yeah. evidence to back that. Uh, so my next podcast is, this was the first podcast I think I ever ever listened to so it's not one that i currently like i don't listen to it every single week uh, but it's one that i will go back to and listen and i've listened to quite a bit of it over the years and that is this american life which is one that i think a lot of people have probably either heard of if they've not ever listened to an episode because it's carried weekly on npr on a lot of local npr stations where like it usually will run i think either on saturdays or sundays and then the podcast is released, like I said, it weekly. They are currently up to episode 748 because they've been around for years. But the show is, it is hosted by Ira Glass and put out, I think, through Chicago Public Media. And each week there's just a, a different topic and they will usually do two to three shorter stories that revolve around that topic. Uh, sometimes the, the story could be a work of fiction. Uh, sometimes it is something that's like, you know, it's tr true story. It's something that actually happened. Uh, my favorite episodes are ones where they will get into usually more of like a very up-to-date uh, political topic or something along those lines, something that's going on in the world right now. And they will do really good in-depth personal stories about those topics. One that they just released the, the latest episode that I, that I listened to was called The End of the World as We Know It. And it's it's just the whole episode is focusing on this one family and how the family kind of imploded as they went uh, really all in on the fight against climate change. And so it's just like, how does it, ha so it's pretty much like when one person in the family gets super absorbed by something and then how it affects the whole family. So it's just, it's a really interesting show with a very broad range of topics over the years. So I like that, that it's not tied into any one specific thing. It can be broad. And so each week you kind of don't really know what you're going to get, but it's always very well produced, uh, lots of really good interviews with people. Um, and they've had some, a, a bunch of, they've won a bunch of awards over the years for the show. Uh, and Ira Glass, the guy who um, kind of coordinates 
or presents for it most of the time is is a really really well spoken narrator and speaker. So it, it's one that I definitely think a lot of people have probably heard of, but if you've never taken the time to listen to it, maybe just grab it, grab the latest episode and take a listen. And they, it was, it was well enough received that they did, I think two seasons on HBO of like an actual like TV show based off of the podcast, which was, which was interesting because it was, it was, it really was just the radio, the podcast, but with, with visuals. So it wasn't um, a big massive change on, on the, on how it was displayed, I guess. But yeah, so This American Life, really good show. Again, massive backlog with over 700 episodes. And yeah, it was it was the podcast that got me into listening to podcasts. So I wanted to mention it. So it sounds like basically an expose format, kind of yeah. hearkening back to the days when the news used to actually do in-depth reporting. Right. So like, the, the, honestly, this, this podcast makes me think of like what news probably was in the heyday a lot of the time. So, so I have a question. When you were like watching or listening to the End of the World as We Know It podcast, yes. did you feel fine afterwards? <laughs> Oh, oh, see I what thought, I did there? That I, was funny. That yeah, was yeah, funny. yeah. I saw saw what you did there. Yeah, for sure. And yes, was, I I felt fine. Well, okay. So you're fifty fifty now, James. One <laughs> absolute miss and one hit. Yeah, there you go. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's good so far. So Nathan, what is your last podcast? That yeah, you like? what is it? I, I'm struggling which because there's still a lot I would like to talk about, but I'll talk about Escape This Podcast, which is a really fun show that I like. It's uh tangentially related to board game, and basically what it is is a couple that and the, the lady designs escape rooms audio escape rooms and they have guests come on and go through this escape room with them and they kind of alternate seasons like one season they'll do like a connected arc and each episode will be different guests but it'll be kind of continuing the story and then the other season will be actually the reverse a guest comes in and actually does their own podcast uh, their own uh escape room and the normal hosts actually are actually going through a guest escape room but this has been pretty successful they've done really well they've actually branched out and they actually have several other podcasts that they branch under uh consume this media and they, so they do escape this podcast to do solve this murder which is basically the lady taking her husband through like a murder mystery and he has to kind of solve the crime it's kind of pure style uh, or Agatha Christie whatever whatever your your favorite murder mystery author whatever famous person personality that's what I was looking for what I was looking for but yeah both are really good and both are you can really get invested in and like really kind of solve the puzzle yourself and what they, they also go further and if you really enjoy this podcast they actually make all the writ everything she wrote available so you could actually run the games yourself with your friends that's really cool it sounds really good but i'm going to talk about a better podcast huh. <laughs> my third favorite podcast and that is blue peg pink peg i believe it's still a bi-weekly podcast it's all about board games now there are, i think are episode 200 something right now and their current hosts are going to be rob christina and jeremy previous hosts were patrick and josh the reason I bring that up is because Patrick is my favorite host, even though he's not currently on it anymore. But the Rob, and, yeah, but Rob, Christina, and Jeremy are still a lot of fun. Rob's like super loud and crazy, but uh, it's a it's a very very fun podcast. I uh, like that they do re rolls on there and they do like all sorts of fun, crazy, fun content. Great podcast. I highly recommend checking them out. And my third favorite podcast, my second favorite podcast, still in existence. I was now, gonna say their latest episode was about Ankh, Gods of Egypt. I know some it guys was, played that it recently, was, and I haven't listened to that one yet, and I'm waiting to listen to it because right. it looks like it's going to be amazing. So yeah. I, I'm a little bit behind on that one. I'm only on 113. Oh yeah, you got a ways to go. <laughs> so you're still in the Patrick era, which is the good era. But uh, actually, no, he just spoilers, but he just left. No, he comes back too. I don't oh, remember. Okay. It's been, I lost a lot of them. I'm hey, pretty spoilers. sure he came back. For, oh yeah, spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> But, but in case you don't know what the re-roll is, it's basically they revisit a game that they right. played a year ago and re-review it, update their ratings. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good cool, idea. They have like uh, their ratings and then they go the PEGS ratings, which is their community rating too, which is really cool. One of the things that does make it a really good podcast that I enjoy is they put actually a lot of licensed music in, but they make sure they do all their cover themselves and, you know, do the proper accreditation of where the songs came from and they have, keep it short enough so they're not going to get sued. But they don't do that anymore. They actually oh, really? got a band that does their music mm. now. You'll, you'll get to that. You'll get there. You'll get there. You got a ways to go, but you'll get there. Uh, but yes, Onk. Just so everyone knows, was designed by Eric M. Lang. It oh, wait, is... I, I, James, I didn't catch that. Who was it? Eric M. Lang. <laughs> and we just recently did a playthrough on it. Yes, we did. Uh, we did a four player and a three player one. As of the time of this recording, the four player uh, playthrough is up and the three player playthrough will be up eventually here. Yeah, the four player one's the only one you need to watch because. Yeah, the... <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. I, won. I wonder why. <laughs> uh, and then we also have a review of all the expansions for Onk. I haven't done a review of the base game yet, but that's coming up. And I'm going to do a review of my most favorite gods. So I'm going to do the gods, what I think are the best gods to the worst gods in order. So oh, I think cool. it'll be top seven. I think there's seven in there. You know, there's at least in- seven. It would be interesting if a fan went through all our previous podcasts and see if there's any that he did. James did not mention Eric Lang. The one I haven't been on wasn't mentioned. I was actually tempted, uh, tempted to edit insert it in. the name. <laughs> be like editorial comment. But I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I, was, so yeah. I was about to say if a fan did that, he might James might go back and do exactly that. Like edit it, edit it. I totally could, and then just re-upload it. I could do that. That can happen. That's fun. So that don't, doesn't need don't to push me. Don't push me. <laughs> so yeah. So third favorite podcast. That's my last podcast. And what mm-hmm. do you got, Dan? I'm gonna talk about my other most favorite board game podcast. Sadly, sadly, this podcast is also concluded they are no longer producing episodes but like ludology it also has a very timeless nature to its episodes and you could probably pick this up and listen to all 122 episodes and have a blast with it and that was flip the table the podcast Uh, with flip flurry with flip flurry and there were there are four guys on the panel but i think moderator chris Right. Professor Laser Books. And uh, yeah. Anyways, the premise of this podcast is that these these gentlemen would play really mostly really bad rolling moves from the 80s and uh, critique them. So it was it was part review but review for games that are completely irrelevant to today's audience because nobody's going to go back and play bad games from the 80s. Part critique because they would identify problems with these games that were problems with design from that era, but it's not like modern design can't run afoul of some of these things. And then at the end of every episode, they would have a a quiz show mini game that was always, always entertaining. So yeah. Flip the table is what I'm going to go with. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Flip Flurry came out with another podcast, which I think ended, but it was a lot of fun. I think it was like Saturday morning cereal or something like that. Super Saturday morning cereal or whatever. And in that one, he took those old games and he'd have a wheel and you'd get a theme and you'll get like a mechanic and you have to make a game out of it. And well, I, caught, of I caught a couple episodes of that one. I forget what it called exactly, but one of the segments because he organized the show in a series of like shorts almost yeah and not every short was on every episode but like one of the shorts he would invite a guest on and he would roll this this wheel so he would randomly generate a theme and a mechanism and his guest would have to pitch a game that used that theme and mechanism yeah i love uh, that. so that no really actual de- no actual design involved but you would have to you'd have to like you know, start thinking around and just start brainstorming of how to squeeze this theme together with this mechanism and try to come up with a pitch. That sounds yeah. really interesting. I, I, I would find that to be a very difficult thing to do. So to listen to people do that would probably be very educational. Oh, really? It would be. Really? It would be a very difficult thing. So if someone put you on the spot, per oh. se. <laughs> yeah. a good, 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 quick way to get me to log out of this podcast, guys. <laughs> so uh, I do have to say, you're not 100% accurate. It's not completely dead. They still do episodes of Flip This Table every year. It didn't happen last year because uh, of COVID. But what they do is that during the Granite Game Summit, they actually have a live episode. And I've seen a couple of them. I actually got to play uh, a couple games with Flip Furry afterwards played some games that I would normally never even look at it that ended up being really fun. <laughs> yeah, that is when they realized that their podcast was coming to conclusion, which was around episode 122 or so. They issued one final episode of the podcast, which was episode 10,000. Um, yeah. sorry, it's an in joke for people who have listened to the episode to why it was episode 10,000. And then of course, you know, a year to two years later, they did a live episode at the Grand Game Summit and and published it as episode 10,001. So, um That's funny. Yeah, there's a, there's a chance that there's a couple more episodes that are going to trickle out of that channel, but mo- most of it is complete. Okay. You're talking about once a year, though? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. So, Peter, what is your last podcast? Yeah, so my, my third and final podcast is the podcast that I've been listening to the most recently, and that is a podcast called Beyond the Screenplay. So I really love film and watching movies, and uh, so whenever I get a chance to maybe listen to some people do deep dives 
into the story that is happening from movies, I think is a is a really interesting thing. And so this podcast, that's all they do. Each episode is a deep dive into a film or a series of films. And they discuss kind of what's going on there in the story. What's it all about? So it's not just a rehashing of the film itself. I mean, they're really trying to get down into the nitty gritty about what the storytellers are trying to convey through their films. And they've done all sorts of movies that range the gambit. So probably I would say my favorite episode that I've listened to so far was uh, one of their very first episodes. And that was on, it was the first episode on Shaun of the Dead because I love that movie. I think it's hilarious. They also did a really great episode on Edge of Tomorrow and they've done some series on, they did like the whole Lord of the Rings. Each episode, each episode, they had three episodes for each of the Lord of the Rings. They've done some of the Indiana Jones films. So if, if you like a lot of, it's a lot of popular films, it seems like most of the time, but it's just really interesting to listen to uh, these four individuals who uh, seem to know quite a bit about film and talk about it and kind of break down each of the the movies. And so there are movies, uh, episodes that I'm really looking forward to listening to that I haven't gotten around to yet. I'm really looking forward to Jaws. I actually just finished uh, another rewatch of that film the other day. So I'm going to be looking forward to listening to that episode. And then uh, A Quiet Place uh, and Arrival are a couple of the other ones that I'm really looking to, mm. looking forward to. Arrival is a fantastic uh, sci-fi film that was released what within like the last four or five years, I think. So yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, this, uh, directed by the same guy who directed the new Dune movie that is about to come out here within the next handful of weeks. Mm. So I'm really looking forward to li- continuing to listen to this podcast. So if you're somebody who really gets into uh, movies or film and you just like listening for about an hour to an hour and a half, people talking about a very specific film beyond the screenplay is really good. And the people who do this also have another one called Lessons from the Screenplay. And that one's, I think, more on the writing side of things. So I've not I've not dived uh, dived into that one. But beyond the screenplay is really good. I'm really scared about the Star Wars ones in there. Uh huh. I haven't Uh, listened to them yet. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really scared to watch them because I I mean, there's a lot they could. Yeah, but uh, I'm going to listen to them eventually, but I haven't gotten there quite yet. The Iron Giant one will be cool. That, would that is cool. a good movie. Yes. So, I like the Iron Giant. Yeah, it's a great, great classic movie. So it'd be interesting what they say about that. I am adding that right now so I could uh, start listening to it. I really want to listen to the Arrivals one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's that's high up on my list of ones to, to listen to. And I, I'm not somebody who has to listen like episode one, episode two, episode three, especially with something like this. I will just skim through and I'll be like, what's the movie that I'm most interested in hearing about right now? And that's the episode I'll listen to. I have to watch their one on Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull because that movie is <laughs> horrific. It yeah. is like the worst movie ever created. So like one of them. So I gotta see like what they say about that because yoy. Yeah. So it's a really, really good podcast. So I, I hope that you guys do listen to it and tell me what you think about it. So All right. So that was the top three of all of our favorite podcasts, obviously. All podcasts for you guys to all check out. Yeah. yeah no. Obviously, mine it's are the joy. best. Joy. <laughs> mine are the best. <laughs> But yeah, so thank you for listening on this International Podcast Day. Remember to tell everyone to listen to Tabletop Gaming Guild. And then after that, after they subscribe and give us a five-star rating, then you can check out these other podcasts. But, you know, well, it's all good, right? After they listen to this podcast, they need to check out our YouTube. Oh, and yeah, then they can YouTube. check out these other podcasts. <laughs> There's a linear track that you must take for this. But anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. If you have any feedback for us, feel free to visit us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Board Game Geek Guild 2989, or our website at tabletopgamingguild.com. Don't forget to like, follow, and or subscribe. Tabletop Gaming Guild is a product of Tabletop Gaming Guild LLC. All rights reserved.